everyone, and welcome to our latest RuneScape weekly live stream. We're here to play the Glacor front. It's happening. Yeah, we finally released it today. We're really excited to get the second front of the Elder God Wars dungeon out there into the world. And joining us today, uh, you may remember them from the real stream if you dropped us, join us for that. And they're back here again to celebrate the release. So let's go around the table quickly. Uh, Mod Orion, hello. Hello, good afternoon. Uh, we've also got Mod Shogun. Hello. And also, Mod Black Witch joining us for not your second stream, but this is one of your only... So you're one of the few, right? Single-digit streamer still. <laughs> A third stream, I think. This time, yeah. Awesome. Cool. Well, thank you very, very much um, for joining us. Uh, we're going to cover just something very quickly. So if you haven't seen uh, a bunch of the stuff we've been doing over the course of today, um, we've been listening to a lot of your feedback and a lot of your comments and been making hot fixes as they go. Shogun, Orion, do you want to run us through some of the hot fixes we've deployed so far today? Yeah, absolutely. I'm just laughing at the very us versus them situation on the stream right now. For us. <laughs> I, I'm all the way in this. <laughs> you guys are chilling over there. Feel very lonely. Um, so yes, okay. We've uh, we've deployed a couple of uh, important hot fixes. Um, there was a uh, a bug where um, at 250% enraged, the bolstered glacite um, would set the boss's HP to um, the amount of HP that uh, the little unstable core would have, um, and that was a last minute trigger change that caused that um, and we basically hot fixed it within the hour so that's gone um, <clears throat> we fixed the uh, amount of Triskelion keys that were dropping um, that was a hard mode enraged calculation bug um, so that's that's fixed uh, some of you may notice that you had a bag full of Triskelions um, so you know early bird bonus lol um, what else did we fix um, we fixed a, a hard mode um, instancing um, problem where um, you could exit the hard mode encounter um, and due to the use of a temporary variable in the boss instance system, uh, you were able to switch off mechanics in hard mode, um, which was a big no-no. Um, it just needed an additional check that it didn't have. It had three or four checks there, but uh, this particular one was a very sneaky one. Um, and yeah, that one's been hotfixed. And there was one more, uh, Shogun, Huli, do you want to remind me? Uh, uh, the last attacks. one. Oh, sorry. Invi the invisible attacks on animations. Oh, yes. So yeah, we have, we have slowed down one. the attack speed slightly. So now all animations should play accordingly. Yeah, it's a weird awesome. engine bug um, or client bug with NXT where uh, if you, for us uh, in script, if we play the same animation that the boss is already currently playing, um, it doesn't refresh the animation and play it again. So um, there would be instances where uh, the boss would play its like left hand animation. <laughs> and um, and uh, yeah, so the boss would play its left hand animation and... Um, then it would play the left-hand animation again with a couple of frames still left of the animation that it was playing. Um, and uh, NXT wouldn't render that anim. So we, as, as Shogun said, we've just increased the base attack speed or the base attack timer by one cycle. So it's uh, eight cycles instead of seven cycles. And all of the further um, attack speed difficulty changes in Enrage and the prayer switching mechanic, they propagate downwards as well. Uh, and yes, there was a dab in the background. Um, well spotted. <laughs> I didn't even spot that as well. I was just so uh, yeah, listening. That's, so, oh. that's Mod Soften, who did the swords, by the way. Um, she's my roomie. And uh, yeah, we just got her dab on stream, I guess. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you for running us through um, all the hot fixes today. Um, anything you've been reporting out there, including your feedback on the text changes, which is not relevant to this team uh, on here today. We're capturing all of that and passing it to the team or QA as, as it depends. So just keep it coming. And thank you very much for everything you've sent us today. Um, and obviously, there's been plenty of hot fixes to go out already. I know the team's been working. <laughs> oh, Sofan's promising it again. You're just going to have this all stream now, Orion. <laughs> yeah, I'm probably going to put a lock on this door in future. <laughs> so, I mean, let's go 
So what we're going to do is let we're going to do a let's play. So if you're joining us, some of you may not have got a chance to go play this just yet. Maybe you're stuck at work, or <laughs> you just can't get to a device that can play it. Um, or maybe <laughs> now I see it. Um, I'm just and tap maybe my uh... <laughs> get trolled. And maybe uh, you just want to see uh, a little bit more insight from the development team and what went into making this front. So we're going to kind of do this as you, we're just going to follow me playing um, and we're just going to talk about it as we go and explain everything. Maybe give you some dev deep dive stories as we go and answer your questions from the chat. We'll do our best to grab them as we go. Um, I've, uh, I'm going to be playing this if you haven't seen before. Maybe you're someone who this is your first entry to PVME. This is a perfect starting point. I know plenty of the people in the clan I've seen have, have been trying it for the first time today, which is really cool as their first PVM experience. Um, fret not, if you've been watching streams all morning, you've been seeing people destroy the boss uh, on five mechanics and make it look super easy. Now you'll get to see what a four minute kill looks like with someone who's very much on their PVM journey. <laughs> so yeah. uh, hopefully it'll be inspiring to someone that, you, you know, if you're not quite a Lucario or an RS guy uh, or many of the other amazing streamers out there um, you can be like me distinctly mediocre but at least you can kill the boss <laughs> cool so um, Blackwatch let's talk to you first I mean everyone's now finally getting out there I'm seeing a lot of love for the environment just like we saw for the stream I mean how does it feel to have people going this is your first ever RuneScape environment that you've owned from start to finish right yeah, I've I've helped out on a bunch of other environments, like making making assets and stuff for it, and doing some set dressing. But this was the first one that I was responsible for, that I just had to make from from white box to finish, really, which was a bit a bit scary at first. But you know, Wonder Ryan and Shogun just completely trusted me with it and just let me do my thing, and I'm I'm really happy with how it turned out, and I'm really happy with with how positive everyone was about it. Yeah, I mean, like, uh, just looking around, it's just such a stunning environment. What was the kind of main inspiration for the, like, this area specifically and the kind of shape you gave it, this kind of circular shape? Where did that all come from? You were kind of concepting um, stuff for? Yeah, we, we had two main concept art pieces that were made for this environment. One was of the aqueduct with the glacier on it. And another another concept was made of, like, this kind of overlook area, which had a, a building in the middle and just like other buildings around it. There wasn't nearly as much snow, and the angle that it was at also did not show the view of the aqueduct, so kind of, I put that in the in the game first, and then realized that the building that was in the middle there just completely blocked the view of the of the Arch Glacier <laughs> behind it. So, uh, kept just like demolishing it until the only thing that's left is just like those few pillars in the middle. <laughs> and then, yeah, just like, through lots of rounds of feedback and just like keep working on it, it just constantly was like, let's add more snow and even more <laughs> snow and just like completely drown this place basically in an avalanche and just make it look destroyed, like make it look like the the glade stars arriving actually had a big an impact and that it already, like in a very short amount of time, that they already did all of that to this part of the city, just like make it feel like there's an actual consequence of them being there. Uh, I just saw Damas the Greek said, Winter Wonderland, but dangerous, which I love as a, as a description of it. Oh, Modern Ryan's now acquired a cat as well. <laughs> Who else will he guest star on Modern Ryan's stream? Yeah, a burglar at this rate. <laughs> yeah, the, at this rate, yeah. Um, awesome. And, uh, like, I mean, for me, like, I just love the framing throughout this whole thing. Like, it's just that pure sight line from start to finish. You can always see uh, the arch clay core looming, which is really, really cool. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, that was, the most, that was the most important thing for it. Like, almost everything that I put in it was all to fr frame the aqueduct with the glades or more, like, the ice spikes and all of that all just point and lines towards him. Like, even the avalanche just, like, goes down and then, like, up at the sides. Um, also, just, like, all to frame the arch glades or... And yeah, again, really happy with how it turned out. I don't know if you have chat open up, but there is so much love in the chat for it. Uh, Tigridi Dave says, oh my god, the scenery is used so much love for it. The depth of field, the snow on all the rooftops, died a few times just awing at the sight of the snow, failed city. <laughs> it's really, really cool. Thank you for all the kind yeah, comments, I mean, by the way. Like, we, we need to try and like, improve it every time. It's, it's like one of the fun things of making environments on RuneScape, is you can just like keep popping it every time now. And it's just like, yeah, there's a big difference between old areas and the new ones. But it's it's just really fun to constantly see what we can do uh, with it and how much further we can push it. Awesome. Now, within this environment, 
Well, Trogan, uh, I know you've had a huge part in bringing the Slayer mob kind of experience to life. Um, how are you feeling about today's release? What would you let people know about the Slayer mobs? What should they know about fighting Glassites and Glacor- uh, Glacors uh, in, uh, so, in in this front? Um, the, the recluse ring for that I mentioned in last stream is that they have uh, the same drop rate as uh, Hellhounds for dropping hard clue rolls. With a faster respawn time as well, so uh, there'll be a lot of clue scrolls from coming from them. Um, other than that, we added some uh, actual glacers in the background as well, uh, which um, they don't drop the shards of our medal we get from Mitchell Mahjurat, but other than that, they have all other drops. So yeah, awesome. they, like- they give you a debuff if you if when actually hit you. Uh, each stack of that debuff will increase your defense, but if you get too much of it, it will explode and deal damage to you. Yeah, and yeah, I was to say, I think you just saw uh, I was also <laughs> forgot my shard, which meant that I was getting a lot of aggro all of a sudden there, which was fun. Um, cool, and um, obviously, like you know, something that's part of this is the gla- uh, the glacial remnants uh, that obviously dropped. Do you want to talk a little bit about what their role is within the kind of ecosystem of um, the Wen front? Yeah, so the Glacier Remnants are part of the crafting table, along with the Dark Annihilus and the Frozen Core of Lang you get from the boss. You use those to uh, craft the, the new weapons or the cosmetics. Um, so yeah, you need a bunch of them. You, you get them both from the, the boss and the, the Glacites. Or you, you can, can just make, make a ton of snowballs. Of <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, of course. And, uh, you know, would if you were telling people like is this a viable alternative um, way to acquire these components versus um, bossing like is if someone's more focused on the Slayer experience would you say it's something that they can use effectively or is this very much like something that's kind of meant to complement that experience it's a com- complementary exchange basically cool so it's like not a of the cool and obviously um, what they also drop, and this is how I got mine earlier because I haven't been doing too much time for bossing, so I've just been uh, AFKing, uh, fighting some glassites. Was um, obviously you get your resonant, resonant anima, but this time of obviously it was of when. Do you want to talk us through um, the latest updates to the Pontifex Shadow Ring? Because we kind of kept this one a secret uh, intentionally uh, until yes. today. So um, you will, uh, you will, I think the troves have a higher chance of appearing after this update. So you have an increased chance of getting the troves of tier two version, mm-hmm. and um, then the basic attacks from the Arc Lego will be uh, just ten percent or fifteen percent weaker. I think it's ten. The protection prayers, yeah, ten yeah, percent. So if you pray, you normally have fifty percent. With the ring on, it's now uh, at sixty percent, and that stacks with your uh, rings and the other effects as well. So, really cool. It's, uh, really cool. Uh, uh, yeah, and also, um, there's, I saw some questions um, uh, around the stun and if um, that helps you in this fight in any way, if there's any kind of stun protection in um, the fight with the Arch Glacier. And also, um, uh, there's someone who actually just reported a bug that apparently it doesn't work anymore once you've upgraded it. Are we aware of either of those things or any, any mention uh, so- of those right now? The stun effect is for Karapak, and uh, mm. this, uh, there was a bug that lets you uh, be immune to stun effect without even having the ring equipped. So now you need, you're required to have the ring equipped to not get stunned at Karapak anymore. And, uh, there you go. Yeah. Wicked. I think that'll answer a lot of people's uh, questions there as well. Yeah, because you could just have it in your inventory, couldn't you, with Karapak before? Because I think I was keeping my Asylum uh, ring on, so... Um, cool. Okay. Anything else you want to say on the Slayer experience before we get to the to obviously like the main meat in this pie, which I think is the uh, the bossing. Is there anything else you want to say about the Slayer experience that people should know? Uh, not really. No. Uh, use the um, ability from Hellware to deal a lot of AOE damage to them. Oh yeah, I even forgot them. to go well. grab uh, the Hellware's battle ability, battlefield ability today. So let's quickly rock that. Oh. Uh, by the way, I'm playing this remotely, so if you see any jumps like that, it's probably my connection, because that's what it just did. So, let's drop this here. <laughs> I used that very ineffectively. 
Yep. That was probably the worst use of a Hellware Mushroom in the history of Hellware Mushrooms. Right, on, to, on that note, on to the boss. Uh, so we're going to go, uh, we're actually going to play the boss and we'll talk through the mechanics and we'll talk through a lot of the systems. But first, just in case anyone hasn't seen how this all works. Um, obviously, you can see there's a new little bit of UI here. Talking about boss mechanics, we have all these amazing mages from uh, around the world of Gilanor joining us for this fight. Do you want to just give us a setup? What's what's this boss all about? Um, what are these mechanics about? And um, why did we do this for this boss? Yeah, sure thing. Um, so essentially, the uh, what we touched on with the stream last week is that. Um, this boss, we designed it to be customizable and scalable um, so that you can play it at the difficulty that you wish. Um, it's supposed to be like a gateway to PVM. It's supposed to be a way for players to come into um, combat uh, without feeling overly intimidated or overly pressured. Because um, PVM is difficult and it's easy to give up on it if you're a newer player or a player who's just always been used to skilling um, and you want to make the transition over to doing like Telos or Araxor or whatever um, that, that jump is insane like we actually we, we lose a lot of players after the first couple of times they try a boss like to, to the, the combat black hole basically they, they go in they die and they go oh well that was way too difficult I'm not doing that again so we're giving them, um, we're giving you guys essentially a, um, a sandbox area that you can just play in and learn PVM. Um, but also it looks really cool. So we've got this massive boss, um, awesome environment, really cool effects and stuff like that. So you, you, you don't feel like you're just fighting like some goblins or something. You're actually taking part in like a huge, awesome, lore-driven boss fight in the latest God Wars dungeon. Um, and then for players who obviously do um, understand more of the combat system and are more hardened veterans, should I say, um, they can jump in, switch switch the mechanics on um, to full difficulty, go into hard mode, check out it's in rage scaling, etc. And um, kind of discover where they want to sit on the spectrum of difficulty. Um, so obviously the interface that you can see on the screen right now has five tick boxes and five icons, each pertaining to one of the respective mechanics that the boss knows. And uh, each of the five mages is responsible for holding back that particular mechanic um, story-wise. Because uh, the Arch Glacier itself is extremely powerful. It's a massive ice elemental from an alien world or, or you know, from, from uh, the depths of space. Um, and it's here and it's causing havoc. Um, each one of the mages there can um, essentially switch on and off one of the mechanics, allowing you to customize the, the boss fight. Um, yeah, however you like. Um, so I think what you're going to try and go on all five mechanics straight away, are you? Yeah, because, uh, you know, if you've watched any of the very experienced PVMers out there this morning, you'll probably have seen them go, what, in about a minute kill on a five mechanic normal mode. Um, yeah. When you see me do it, it's going to be four minutes and every mechanic's going to show up. So uh, we'll probably Excellent. do that. I'm just going to quickly tech, uh, teleport to um, Water Tree and just kind of refresh everything very uh, quickly. Respect the, respect the inventory full of swordies like it. Uh, sailfish, I mean, sorry, swordies. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say. I mean, they're to like, be fair, they look like very the, similar. If it was a Pokemon evolution of a swordfish, that's yes, what it would be. Yes, totally. The sailfish. Totally. Yeah. By the way, I, I never noticed the amount of detail even on the aqueducts. Thank you. Nice save. Oh, goddamn cat. Please, no hack. Yeah, I forgot to do it before the stream, so <laughs> hacked. <laughs> well done. Uh, I'm very, I'm very proud of you, production team. That's a, that's a great save. Um, I'm just trying to think: is there anything else I want? No, there is not. Okay, I'm going to keep it pretty simple. I don't need to take um, a familiar for this famous last words, but um, when I was doing it earlier, it's okay. So what we'll do is we'll do a narrated run of the uh, boss fight, um, and you can kind of see how things go. And uh, if I mess it up on stream, that will be my first death. Uh, but thankfully, if you didn't know, um, it's free death week, so it's always safe death in uh, normal mode but um, even hard mode is free this week in terms of deaths uh, because we have just for this week uh, free death week on hard mode um, 
That applies to all bosses in the game, by the way. Uh, so if a boss normally doesn't have safe death, which is the majority of bosses in the game, uh, then uh, you're very much going to get um, a free... It's free death week for those two. It's not just for the Glacor. Uh, one thing as well, uh, for those of you who don't know, because I've been seeing uh, quite a few people um, asking this uh, and are asking how you do it, if you're looking to unlock hard mode, it's not just a case of going and um, beating the boss with five mechanics turned on. You also need to make sure your boss instance is set to a maximum of one player. If it's set beyond that, it will not give you the unlock for hard mode. So if you've been doing it multiple times, we're like, why isn't it unlocking? Go check your instance, because every example we've seen, that's fixed it for people. Uh, and that's an intentional protection you took, right, Sugar and Orion, uh, from this? Um, sure sorry, I was playing with it. the cat. Cat cam. Yeah, Shogun, please take that. Uh, so it's because, so it's how our achievements used to work as well. Mm -hmm. So we, we, it has to be consistent. Um, you can, is it a way to technically help someone else out by doing it? So we had to restrict it to one player only in an in instance mm -hmm. to come for it. Just, yeah. So, all right, we're going to jump in. So yeah, if you, um, Shogun, Orion, as I play for it, if you just want to narrate each of the attacks and what you're intending to teach as best you can within the time, like I said, I should be slow enough that you can do it. So um, without further ado, <laughs> I'll just jump in uh, and we'll get going. This is this is fun because we'd normally have a script order of the mechanics that we want to we want to do. Yes. But just for those of you who don't know, the mechanic orders like random. Um, with this boss, so it's a bit of variation. So obviously this is the creeping ice mechanic. This is this happens for every single mechanic, and he's uh, put down the pillars of ice. These are yep. um, designed Let's to kind click. of teach. Uh, sorry, you I, I just misclicked. So I noticed my. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen a lot of people have like struggling with these for about the first half an hour or so, but like you'll get it, you'll get it. Like I on on hard mode, I can run around and not get hit by them. No problem. Um, seeing some of the other streamers that are doing pretty well with it now, whereas they were struggling with it quite quite badly this earlier this afternoon. Nice. That was a resonance right there. I'm proud of you, yep. Huli. <laughs> um, so that was the frost cannon attack, which is just the coolest animation ever. And realistically, that's in there to teach you how to use defensive abilities or more specifically, um, equip a shield. And uh, oh, we're going to get the collapse mechanic. So this is a DPS race slash survival mechanic. All you need to do really is pick an arm and target the arm and kill the arm um, and escape from this horrible snowy blizzard of death in the center. As you can see, I'm doing this on Revo, so I don't have like an amazing DPS burst, but I can still get out. It's okay. <laughs> have you got your death Swiddy on number one? Yeah. Yep. Thankfully, the creeping ice, I think, is going to play nice here. Okay, so now yeah. we have a different... Yeah, we we'll talk about this one. So, uh, Shogun, do you want to talk about the flurry? So, the yeah, flurry, it's... Um, it speeds up your attack. So, and he also starts changing between two attack styles. To so teach you how to, like, observe what the boss is doing, see the difference in animations, and then change your prey accordingly. And for that, we're also benefiting oh. you by giving you more prayer protection if you pick the correct style and then later on in hard mode we add in a third style and increase it even further so by the way uh, i just lagged out almost entirely there on the remote connection to the game i'm currently running so that was fun <laughs> it's a brilliant excuse oh yeah it was it was fun i'm surprised my uh, my video didn't freeze I'm getting this on the border of that oh DPS press again so as you can see, if you were watching any streams this morning, this is a hell of a lot slower. I've seen Enrages quicker than this. 100% <laughs> plus, but that's what happens when you get amazing at PBM. And you're not when you're me. Oh my god. Yeah, but the thing is, is you represent like the average player. And what people mm. see on stream is like, you know, the, the 99th percentile of PVM. Exactly, yeah. And we're trying to cater for the majority while still providing the minority something you know something to actually sink their teeth into um which is actually to be honest really not that uh like not it's not easy okay it's just not that easy um 
the way that we've scaled the Enrage is potentially like the best way we could have done it in the time that we had. Um, and so far, what I'm seeing is people having a lot of fun with the hard mode. So I think we made the right decision. Um, it, it allows people this kind of gateway into PVM. Jesus, that's blinding. Um, that, that, <laughs> yeah, that I play at this angle. Uh, that's, this is the angle I prefer to read most of the attacks, to be honest. I find it yeah, the that's most fair readable. enough. We need to. We need to. We need a frost cannon dark mode. That's what we need. <laughs> when you're playing late at night and you just go like glare you in, want, your, in your face. Do you want to talk about what the unstable uh, Glacite cores do? Uh, go for it, Shogun. So they are the remnants after you kill the Glacites, and you can uh, shatter them, which will send back the energy towards the Arc Lake or uh, damaging it. So you want to click them and it will deal damage to the boss. As a, as a reward for and killing And also, them. I found like. Well, something I love as well is that, um, you know, you can kind of read that this is going to be the, the kind of ice pillar because you're getting pushed into a corner. You start to learn even how the creeping ice sets you up. It's a bad movement. Exactly. I kited that badly. It wasn't terrible. And it's all about kind of teaching kiting, right? And just kind of move yes. good movement to avoid damage. Oh, yeah, that's and exactly yeah, it. it. Oh, God. And no, if you do that, it's not. <laughs> yeah. Eventually, you will learn how to actually do damage while running around like that. So, uh, if you uh, if you actually use the keys in Revolution, you will attack while running as well. So, mm. it's something comes with experience uh, later on, you can do it as well. Just speed up the kills for you even further. Yeah, I mean, this is pretty, pretty fairly slow. It's uh, like it's slower than Carapac for me on uh, normal mode. So, um, obviously, I'll get better at the boss just like I did with Carapac. But um, you know, it's quite it's quite a lengthy boss. <laughs> When you're on uh, normal mode, I mean, also I'm on Revo, so I think uh, if you were doing manual, uh, normal, and had better gear, obviously. Oh. Yeah, you're doing fine. Plus, also, you are kind of running around and letting us talk about the mechanics. Um, yeah, nice. as best I can. As best yeah. I can. I, I still love that cannon. It looks so amazing. So, yeah, so it's, good. It's really the good. animation team just did such an amazing job with this. Also, boss. I have realized I forgot to pop my Reckless as well, which explains why it's taking a bit longer than usual. Coming up to six minutes now, so that would explain a lot. So, um, for those people who don't know, because I'm probably not going to be good enough to show it, obviously, um, what what kind of changes in hard mode that you're willing to talk about today? Now that people have kind of seen some of it, what what's what's the kind of level up of hard mode uh, do, um, other than obviously make things just generally harder? Yeah, um, sure. I mean, so in the um, the Pillars of Ice movement mechanic, um, you get an extra Pillar of Ice spawn in quite an awkward location. So it forces you to maybe think about using Surge uh, or Escape um, in order to avoid that last one. Um, again, the, the Pillars spawn in like very slightly different random locations, but they are in general within a certain area. Um, the variation is minor. So what that allows for is um, for people to come up with a um, a tactic to deal with them like almost mm. every time and mm. the you know it's one of those things where eventually you know months down the line the community will be like well this is how you do it like this is this is the obvious path that you take no problem mm. um, and it's just a case of figuring that out saving your movement abilities for a kind of an oopsie situation or something like that mm -hmm. there is a bug that we know about that is quite frustrating at the moment for bladed dive users um, and I think it's going to take like a little evening of investigation for me this tonight um, which is that bladed dive obviously the, um, the the beams of ice that come down they don't have any um, uh, any click messaging, any ops or anything like that, right? Mm -hmm. um, but as soon as you go into bladed dive targeting mode, um, the click boxes become active. So that's that's a bit crap. But um, we, I think we knew about it, launched with it because it's something that we can fix pretty soon after the fact. It wasn't gonna, we weren't gonna delay the release because of something like that. Um, we put that as like a, an ultra minor thing. Um, so. That's something I'll look into because I think people might warm up to the Pillars of Ice attack um, a little bit more when Bladed Dive is a bit nicer to use. Um, so we'll see. We'll see how it goes. I, 
like I, I want to see how people are using double surge and bladed dive and stuff to, to get around them because I think realistically once you have those things unlocked that mechanic is a lot easier like a lot easier mm -hmm. um, uh, I think at the, the moment go on go on Huli carry on no no, no no you go you go you were still talking about that it's okay okay yeah sure I mean I think at the moment um, the pillars of ice might be the least favorite mechanic from what I'm seeing like early days um, from the community um, I, I personally love it like but I think there's a, a kind of sadistic part of me that likes watching people run around trying to dodge beams. I just think that's funny. Um, so playing it, I understand that sometimes you just want to do DPS and moving away from these things that can like one shot you at 600% in rage. Well, not one shot you, but do a lot of damage to you at 600% in rage. Um, yeah, like your movement there is pretty damn good. Now you're going to get caught. Oh, well done. Okay. Yeah, and admittedly, a yeah, third beam would come in there on hard mode. But really, as well, you so. is, you've got to think about from what I'm learning is that you've got to think about the vertical to position them where you want, and then move vertically, then horizontally. Right, that's the yeah. the kind of way best way to kite them. Right. Yep. As if I'm and on I'll stream giving PVM tips. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. I like to be quite frank as well. I found it easier to whenever the the um, pillars of ice mechanic came on, I would move my camera around 90 degrees like orbit it 90 degrees so that i would be facing the length of the arena instead and i found it way more practical to move around then um i think people are not not actually trying that out yet you should be able to move your camera around 90 degrees and then you won't be clicking any of the, the boss hitbox and stuff like that so mm -hmm. um yeah if the, obviously if you think about it the boss is always in front of you right now so it's it's easier to misclick if you're looking at it side on um, yeah, you're you're far less likely to click the actual boss because um, I might I might publish a screenshot like we we've got a version of the client that let us sh uh, lets us show all of the click boxes all of the bounding boxes um, mm. and actually the bounding box for the glacier is not touching the aqueduct it's it's like a tile back so when you are sideways with the camera you shouldn't be able to mouse over the glacier like when it's doing the beam attack. So yeah, there's lots of little things that players will eventually find out and master, and that's to be honest, that's what the, the boss fight is about. Like, um, we we get this with every boss, and every game gets it. Every video game, especially MMOs, get it. Like, people find something they don't like and decide that they don't like it within 10 minutes of playing it. But then maybe in a week's time, they go, they change their mind on it and go, actually, I've I've completely mastered that mechanic now. It's not a problem. Um, mm -hmm. It's just that initial initial. Um, initial frustration i suppose but yeah like we're yeah. going to monitor everything we're going to adjust things um based on feedback because at the end of the day we want it to be fun and engaging right um one of the things i just kept saying in the last live stream was we made this boss to be fun go in and die to it and have a laugh and learn how to pvm without any cost you know just go do it it's fine um any bugs that come along um I mean, it's a, I don't like saying it, but it's inevitable that there were going to be some bugs due to the nature of this boss. We've never done anything like this insane before in terms of scalability. I noticed that a lot of the content creators were going, holy crap, like the, the potential for bugs in this boss is huge. Um, but I think like at least on day zero, we've got a handle on any of the big ones. They've been fixed. Uh, the animation one is one of the most frustrating ones for me. The, um, the insta-kill bug, that was fixed very quickly. Um, so, yeah, now now we're just working through the remaining the remaining issues that have uh, popped up. And, like, please keep sending in bug reports and making posts mm. and stuff because it's really, really helpful. Um, like, the, 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 chain of, the chain of feedback today has been incredible. Like, we're yeah. getting the um, send through to QA. We've got this big live... Um, list and everything gets added on there then we can grab what we're working on um, and you know confirm the status of it hot fix yes you know post release next week yes blah 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 it's really good um, and we're just smashing through everything um, so you know anything anything you don't necessarily like just tweet me uh, anything any major bugs you find just tweet Shogun, <laughs> um, and, uh, and, and we'll get them. We'll get them sorted. So yeah, like uh, together we can make this like one of the most amazing bosses I think that RuneScape's ever had. And I'm I'm looking forward to um, 
refining it uh, even further in the future, just little bits here and there. Um, yeah, and I've been Huli, having a lot of fun with it as well. Yeah. There is there is something that I'd like to discuss about post post launch stuff. We've got two yeah, major features. Is that okay yeah. to bring up now? Okay, yeah. cool. Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, so there's two there's two major features that we didn't get um, in in time, and it, to be honest, it's like mostly my fault. So sorry, you're gonna have to wait like uh, an extra week or two for these features. Um, but we recorded some absolutely incredible VO with Ariane and Azanadra. And I wrote this um, like banter bark line system um, for for our audio team, um, and it was just complex enough to not make it into the launch. But I'm glad in a way because the complexity makes it really cool. Um, so we have um, Ariane and Azanadra will will comment on your performance in the fight and tell you um, like certain mechanics are coming or you know if you die. Like it's, they'll say, like some some lines, and there's a whole little conversation system where they can kind of reply to each other and and all of that kind of thing. And I'm really excited to to hear that from from what I've tested. It sounds incredible, and it takes the encounter to the next level. Like it's just so cool. Um, and we're looking to get that in either next Monday or the Monday after as well. Um, f- further than that, uh, the second thing that um, we cut from the launch but want to include post-launch um is a batch of achievements for specifically for this boss um so me and shogun have been going through the achievements last week um deciding which ones we want to keep in the design um so obviously there are the the core achievements for doing certain enrages for doing a certain number of boss kills um the ones that you'd expect for reaper etc um and yeah, so there's a, a bunch of fun achievements essentially that that should be coming um, within the next week or two as well. So that's it. Um, I see some questions about the book pages and yep. the um, the actual book. Uh, Shogun, can you confirm that the trove is dropping and that we yeah. that that drops the pages, right? Yes, the trove will drop pages. Uh, cool. So if you get we the trove, a... it will contain one pages in it. We had a bug with the actual book um, that meant that the random number generator wasn't rolling on the book, basically. Yes. Um, and that that will be that's in that's in the hotfix queue now. Is that correct? Yes. It was. It's yeah. only it was only dropping the glove upgrades and not the book. So it was that's uh, it. skipping the book. Um, so that will be coming soon. Um, apologies to anyone who may have felt that they got the book in their imaginary invisible role, um, but you you didn't not get a reward, you got a different reward instead. So you mm. didn't lose out, but it, some people specifically wanted the book, and I understand. I apologize for that. But you may have got you may have got the glove upgrade. You may have got a bunch of onyx dust. You know, you may have got a decent um, reward instead. Um, it just yeah. Um, as far as I'm aware, that's coming out. This afternoon slash this evening as well, so that would be mm-hmm. that would be live. Um, yeah, I think that's it. Um, those are all yeah. like the main day zero things that we'll be addressing. I don't think we've got any game breaking bugs left, um, but you know we go from we go from blocker to critical to major to minor, and we're still in like critical and major. Um, and I think that once all those things are hot fixed, we'll be moving on to minor bugs. So yeah, that's that's the update. Um, any questions, chat? We'd love to hear any questions you have um, for either Shogun, Orion, or Blackwitch when it comes to the environment as well. Um, please do let us know if you have anything. Um, Tune Tree is asking: Pages are they only from normal mode troves? All troves are the same, right? Correct. It's just based on God. Is that correct, Shogun? Uh, troves are so yeah. Depending on which faction MC you kill. You get a hmm. faction specific trove. You can out Jas and Wen at the moment. So, yeah. Uh, is it? In- I saw some people asking this earlier today as well. Uh, is it intentional that hard mode doesn't give you the drops for the um, the? Oh, so I'm trying to remember what the name is of it now. It's the resident anima, anima um, of Wen. Yes. So that's intentional. Cool. No um, troves or resident anima from hard mode. <laughs> Adam, uh, Adam was asking, can we tweak the defense boost mechanic since it makes normal mode kills so slow? Uh, yes, absolutely. Um, I think that was what we would consider 
a minor bug at the moment. It kicks in occasionally when it's not supposed to, uh, but it is a quick fix for us, and we'll be looking to do that. Um, if not tonight, then tomorrow. Uh, Rory Karras is asking, is the fourth beam spawning in hard mode during the next mechanic intentional? So, this is a graphical bug related to NXT. It's actually not a fourth beam, it's the third beam, but it disappears and reappears. Um, huh. We will be looking into it. It might just be that there's an overload of particles, um, and we will have to kind of reduce those. Um, as you can see with the beams, they are huge cannons of particles just flying down, right? And my my instinct is that um, NXT has a hard limit of how many particles it will render in a certain amount of time. And th that particular boss fight probably hits the limit. Like that mechanic, sorry, hits the limit. Um, I can't confirm that that is the reason. That's just a hunch. Um, but I will be looking into that probably tomorrow morning with um a platform engineer to to make sure that it's the actual reason awesome uh mario just to ask minor thing but why was the ability to replay cutscenes removed from ariana i i can probably guess this but if you don't have the answer uh we moved her right um yes. shogun where did we put it now is it on the eggs um yeah, but yeah. Eggs. i think hell of you it Oh, Hellweir has it. That's the specific cutscene, right? For the yeah. Glade Swords, is that correct? And the eggs yes. should have and all e cutscenes available on yes. it. Yeah. I love that Glade Sword as well. Um, the cutscene's okay. insane. It's so cool. Yeah, I love that as well. I love it, love it. Um, does hard mode drop Dark Nihilus? Yes, hard mode yes. drops it, and so does uh, normal mode. Yes. So it is in both. Um, ah, this is a great one, I think, because I've seen quite a few people mention this. Is there reasons the weapons are in a boss collection log, even though the weapons themselves have to be crafted? Yes. Shogun and I had a 45-minute long chat about <laughs> this exact point, okay? Um, and essentially, I think what we agreed on, because we both had different ideas of what of what we wanted to do with the collection log, but then Shogun mentioned one specific thing, which um, I, I agreed with. And so we just put everything on there. Um, re realistically speaking, a collection log should show full completion of, you know, everything that a boss drops, right? And because this boss drops um, a bunch of craftable ingredients instead of um, some one-time rares or trophy drops, we decided to, in order to show full completion of the boss, you must fully complete the whole crafting table. Um, does that sound about right to you, Shogun? Did I explain that okay? Yep. Yep. Yeah. Um, basically, you will you will need to frozen core of Leng or whatever to complete your collection log in the same way that you would have needed to get two weapon drops to complete your collection log. So it works exactly the same way. Um, it's just that I think, you know, you can, you can make some of the components and sell some of the components in exactly the same form that any other collection log. If you break it down, to its absolute bare minimum components, it's the same as any other collection log, really. Pretty cool. Um, okay, I'm just trying to get some extra. Um, I think there's some that I, I I will ask, but I don't know if you want to answer because I think the community are kind of discovering them. Uh, does the HP in hard mode continue to scale to 4K and rage? <laughs> yeah, enjoy that. <laughs> <laughs> there are there are some there are some differences at higher in rages, 1K, 2K, etc. But yeah, the the scaling kind of, kind of goes off the chain a little bit. So uh, yeah, we'll you know again we'll keep an eye on it. But for now, it was designed to not be 4K'd within like the first month. So if you're gonna cry about it, then you know I'm sorry. It was kind of intended to be like ridiculous. Um, Telos was not supposed to be able to you know you you weren't supposed to be able to reach 4K Telos. The dev said no, like you're not supposed to and then you did and we had to, we had to add titles into the game because of it you know what i mean um so yeah i i saw one comment in the chat that just says boss sucks so thanks for that that was great um <laughs> i love i love yeah, the feedback i'm scrolling through i literally just have that there as well um here's one here's here's a more positive loving the boss the area looks really good were there any different ways in making the environment 
A little bit. So, this is quite difficult to explain, but Dreamscape is kind of made out of, of multiple height maps. So anytime you go upstairs, you go onto a different height map. And Sandestin itself is already at the maximum height that it could possibly be on that one height map. So when I wanted to do the aqueduct and then the, the avalanches around it, like specifically the avalanches, I had to layer them and just seamlessly try to, to blend it so you don't actually see that somewhere in there there's actually like a seam where two height maps just like meet with each other. <laughs> Which was fun, but it, you know, no one notices and it's great. As long as you don't need to walk on it, that was fine. If, if was players would have had to walk on it, that would have been a nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, what she's saying in a in a in a really kind of layman term is that she has a bunch of Jenga pieces, uh, <laughs> a bunch of Duplo pieces, some Lego. And she fits them all together, and it looks like this. And only only very few people on this planet can achieve that kind of thing with with <laughs> interestingly outdated tools um, for for environment. But yes, like what she's done is pushing it to. I was going to say its current limit. Like, those limits will eventually move forward, but, like, yeah, what she's done, I, I genuinely cannot stress enough, is utterly insane um, <laughs> to get to get it to this point. Like, brilliant. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> um, that's awesome. Uh, the one extra thing, I, I want to actually ask you, chat, because I think... I don't know. Hopefully, it's an interesting question for you, for you and as uh, as well, Orion and Shogun. But how many of you out there is this your first boss experience or your first boss experience in a while? Is there many of you out there where this is something where you are for the first time kind of diving into bossing? I'd love to hear if there's any, any people out there. Anyone? It's like me on your early PVM journey or middle of PVM journey, getting good, basically. Yes, yes, me, yes. Okay, so there's some people in the chat joining us today that there's their first thing as well. That's awesome. Welcome. That's really good Join us. Welcome. Welcome to the addiction. You're never going to have a life again because you're going to just want to boss day and night from what I've yeah. done. I think like Profits my first two nights of Carapac, I didn't sleep, basically. So, yeah, I mean, as you can tell, I'm, I think I'm down to like 20 mil uh, because I spent about 400 mil on Ascension crossbows. And now I have to get perks on them because all my perks are on my Zarite bow, or not even my Zarite bow, sorry, my... Uh, oh, God, what's the bow above that? Blanking name blank um it's the spider based one i'm just blanking on the name oh there it is. I've got uh, the noxious, noxious there you go Noxbow. yeah noxious uh, yeah not serum. I, uh... are you kidding me if i had a serum bow <laughs> yeah yeah god among Hooli with the SGB papers. coming in popping off <laughs> <laughs> to be fair oh, at this gosh. point in my pvm journey where i got a grim at like zero kc on solak i think anything could happen at this point right so no nothing can be crazier than that I um like I don't own it anymore. Laugh at me. I lost, so I I've had to kind of start uh, restocking my PVM gear because I lost my Ascension crossbows in the wilderness on a on a wildy worm task. Someone uh, someone got me, and I uh, I feel I feel like a complete fool. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm I'm currently rocking the Serenic with a Royal crossbow at the moment because I spent all my money on skilling. <laughs> uh, but we'll get there. We'll get there. I hate I hate my life. At least oh, you have well. Serenic. I'm still on Pernix at the moment, so. Oh Should come on, Serenic. man! Serenic's like the same price almost, right? Like I know that, at this that point, true? I know. Am I right there? It is yeah. pretty much nowadays. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. pretty much nowadays. So yeah, I was I was um, slightly AFK, all right, and I got someone. Someone saw me and went, Boop. you know. I think I was chatting to a friend or something and didn't look, and I should have. Pay attention in the wildy, ladies and gentlemen. You never know, <laughs> all right? Even though it's RS3, there are people in there, all right, somewhere. PVP get, is alive. I made, some... I made a nice profit from his attacking crossbows when I killed him, though. But it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> Uh, awesome. Any other last questions or anything? Uh, just some chat whilst we're here. 
I just want to make sure that we do, we've covered as much as we can. Like we said, we'll keep you up to date as best we can on any more hot fixes that go out. Um, keep an eye on our social media. I'm trying to bring them over as well into Reddit uh, whenever we're around as well, so we'll bring them in. Ah, Rubik, Lee's Q&A. Um, yes, uh, it, you may have seen briefly it made it into, its way into the news post for this Wednesday. Uh, the two, we never planned for it to be this Wednesday. Uh, well, we did a while ago, but um, two of the people we want on there are having a vacation this week. Um, you can tell I lived in Canada for a while. I just said vacation. Ugh holiday um but uh so they'll be with us next week so next week is when we're doing the least q a uh, we're also hoping to pull together a art and audio stream for uh the glacial front as well which should be fun um when beams are about to spawn you're rapid firing keeps from clicking when f even with fleeting boots on can this be fixed is there anything on uh on that you can say ryan is that something you know about and talk to not it is not. Okay. I will write it down we'll in a trusty notepad. <laughs> yeah, I saw as well. I know this is a minor one uh, in the grand scheme of, of uh, bossing, but I know it's a quality of life thing. I saw a few people mention you can't surge as soon as you uh, come out the portal either. Which are people rushing. <laughs> oh, like um, Shogun, is that potentially because it doesn't... It, does it... Um, does the boss arena not get uh, put on the allow list for surging in instances. Do you think that's no? Because we can surge there. No. So why can't yeah, you surge? Yeah, allows it. You can't surge no from clue. coming in. Yeah, as soon as you come in, it's the portal. Yeah. As soon as you come through the portal, you can't surge out of the portal. Portal blocks it. Oh, I guess it means. Oh, that's you horrible. surge, but so I guess you f the surge fires, but you just don't move. By the sounds of it. Mm. Okay, so it sounds like what I can do is I can change the teleport destination coordinate when you go into the instance to be slightly like one tile into the arena and ensure that you're facing the boss because if you go into the portal now does it put you literally on the purple on the spot pretty much but not enough yeah, yeah. i can't okay. yeah. so I'll, I'll, I'll just move the player one one coordinate in or two coordinates in whatever works yeah that's fine i'll do that okay i'll there now <laughs> We're going to fight on stream whilst I'm trying to answer questions or bring questions in. Uh, it doesn't look like oh. it even fires the surge at least. So, um, so yeah, that's another one. Um, doo -doo -doo. Um, why? What was the decision behind making the uh, uniques not tradable? I assume they mean the the component drops, right? Um, to be honest, with those kind of things, it's it's more like if we do. You can buy everything on the boss, no problem. If we don't, you have to spend a bit of time at the boss before you can trade things, right? Mm -hmm. And either is good, in my opinion. And I think that we like to switch it up on a per-boss basis. The Magister mm -hmm. is an extreme example, right? And, and Ascension Crossbows are an extreme example. You're in it for the long haul. Um, in this case, there's a bit of both. You know, you can get a Leng artifact and you can sell that, but the weapons themselves, yeah, I mean, you kind of want the main components. We wanted to focus on the crafting table being something that you work towards because it feels good when you complete something. And it's not crazy requirements. It's not crazy requirements. Yeah, I mean, there's a, there's a comment there saying long haul sucks. And yeah, I, but also uh, some people really like something to aim towards. I get it. We we are we are a generation of of people who just kind of want everything handed to us now, and I I get that opinion. Like I feel that way about a lot of things, um, but yeah, I, I like the idea that you know you craft this thing for the collection log, then you can sell it, and you've got two two decent moments there, two little hits of dopamine. So yeah, um, there's there's comments in the chat saying that the Leng artifacts aren't actually tradable. Leng Hall. Oh, that, yeah, yeah, but you can upgrade the gloves, right? You can upgrade the gloves right. and sell them. I think that was the, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can, you can up, yeah. Basically, that's it. You, uh, you can buy the gloves themselves, but you can't buy the components to upgrade your own gloves, essentially, right? So. Yeah. Mod Orion, you young people, shakes fist. <laughs> Old man yells a cloud. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Gosh. Um, okay, look, boomer. we've. I'm, I'm, aware, I'm aware of our last few minutes here. Um, 
Blagwitz, Shogun, Orion, is there anything you want to say about this fund to the people before we sign off? Is there anything you want to say to the team or just about the work you did on it or anything at all? What would you like to say? Um, when you guys reacted overwhelming, overwhelmingly positively to the, the kind of keynote stream that we did last week, the amount of pressure that you put on us was insane. So don't do that again. Just negative reactions, please. Okay. <laughs> Terrible. See, sentiment. I was already done at that point, so I, d I didn't have to worry anymore. Yeah. I was, I was pooping my pants. I was like, oh god, they really expect the world with what we've shown them. Okay, like I was yep. like, oh shit. Yep. Yeah. Uh, but it was, it was an amazing feeling. Um, but dear God, was it stressful? And actually, I will admit to making a mistake because of it um there was a last minute change that i made because of people suggesting certain things oh i'm really excited this looks like the best boss in runescape ever this is exactly what runescape's needed since it was made by the gower brothers blah blah, blah. like the comments were insane okay absolutely insane and I, I i introduced one of the bugs today because i went and i did a last minute change and that's stupid right and that i i was just like so I felt so much pressure that this update needed to be like absolutely amazing and everyone took it and went oh my god it's amazing and like carried it on their arms going oh look celebrate celebrate and yeah like oh man so i felt so stupid when this bug actually caused like issues today i was like oh crap my my uh what's the word i don't know my my enthusiasm or like everything was so um Everything felt like like this 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 overwhelming pressure basically for the update to be to be good and it's been stressful as hell, um, but I would not change it for the world. Like what wh the way you guys reacted, the, the watching the streams back from like Wazzy and Ryan, like the RS guy, watching people's comments on on Reddit and Twitter and like it blew my mind. I. I I had a weekend before this release where I could just sit back and look at all the comments like excited for this boss and it made all of the hard work, the late nights and all of that like worth it. And when I say late nights, Jagex aren't overworking me, it's just that me and Shogun like to work nights. Um yeah, it wasn't it wasn't crunch crunch, it was like we just love working at two AM, like we just put some music on and chill, like he's weird, I'm nocturnal. Um, <laughs> I, I'm weird. I like, how, I like how Shogun can't. Yeah, I was to say he can't. He can't just also <laughs> be not turned. We have to be weird. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, no, we're both I, weird I, and not turned. Yeah, but I it is also like the I'm, I am weird. Like working. Yeah, that's a good thing from it. working from home. You can just choose when when you start working. Exactly. Exactly, and and also you don't get emails pinging you, Slack messages pinging you, people going, "Oh, can you help me with this?" Um, I feel like that Slack like... message one was maybe slightly aimed at me. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're fine. Me. You're fine. You're you're not on mute. All right, that's a privilege. Um, <laughs> <laughs> a lot of other people are on mute. Uh, I'll get to you when I can. I'm sorry, um, but no. Uh, basically, the response has been insane. We hope that within a, a week or two, this boss will have a legacy that you know, is up there with some of the greatest bosses in RuneScape. I hope. Um, that's all we can say, really. Uh, anyway, I took the spotlight there. Does anyone else want to chime in? Kind of no, I think, I think you pretty much said it. <laughs> up there with Giant Mole. God damn it! Mole! Someone <laughs> has to mention Mole! <laughs> mole every time. Brilliant. I only did Giant Mole for the first time the other day, actually, which is quite funny. It was a, it was a it weird experience doing it this late in the in the in the game, in my experience. Yeah. Oh, man. giant mole hard mode is actually like really um, finicky. Like you can die to it. Like I was like, oh crap! Like this is this is not as easy. I thought it was as, as I thought it was going to be. Um, someone said, uh, "Is it pronounced Glaysor or Glaysor?" Oh, I need or a sin like, counter. I, for this. I'm just I'm just Definitely, reading yeah, the text. Oh, <laughs> God damn it, Shogun! Uh, no, there's actually a. If you, if you go to Mod Pie's Twitter, he linked a really funny video of um, Mod Chris L, um, who is a complete legend and has a lot of history in RuneScape's like combat system, um, and generally is like quite a loved and well remembered J mod. Um, and there's this hilarious video on Mod Pie's Twitter of someone saying Glacor, and he most deadpan and like almost aggressive or passive aggressive way he goes it's glacor i made it i would know 
and it is just the funniest <laughs> reaction ever. So if you if you have questions about it, I refer you to get in contact with Chris Long somewhere. Um, and and yeah, it's it's Glacor, okay? It's Glacor. And while you might Glacor. call it Glacor in the in the comforts of your own home, don't go out in public, or me and Chris L will find you, okay? And and I'm not gonna continue that sentence, but you'll be in trouble. All right? <laughs> it's like a gif, right? We create the no, quote don't even a go gif. there. But a yif. Everyone calls it a no, gif. No, he doesn't. Doesn't call right, it a gif. I don't, I don't think, think it's the same. I don't think it's the same. Because there's only one the correct same. one. The gif and jif. <laughs> I really wonder, like, how many discussions there's been about it already. In almost every <laughs> meeting where the word glacier gets mentioned. <laughs> yep. I hate the fact that we've said yif on a stream. Like that shouldn't be allowed. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah. So uh, obviously our producer Mod Stacy, and um, who who is is like silent in the background, but she deserves a kind of like a round of applause as well as the QA guys as well for putting up with all the crap that I keep trying to put in last minute and causing bugs. Um, because the amount of bugs that this boss like made and they they spotted and fixed is just absolutely insane. Like the list is just ridiculous. And not only is the list itself ridiculous, the bugs the, the bugs the bugs that they spotted in the last like two weeks of before sign off, like the list is insane. That we had this like oh my god, they've done they, they they've just done so well. Um and you know it's a shame really that we launched with some major bugs, but they are all my fault. Like I'll take the blame for them. Um, not not those guys like they smashed it. It's just me succumbing to the pressure of wanting to make it a good release and trying to fit in some last minute um, changes, like the typical a hole rock star dev that I want to be. You know, like just that. You you've seen those kind of like stereotypical um, game developers on TV shows where they're just like forcing all of their employees <laughs> into crunch and stuff. It's like let's fit in this. Oh, we want to make the player drive a race car into space. Yeah, cool. But we're making a theme park game. What? Just do it anyway. And you know, I'm like, I want to fit all the cool stuff in. Um, uh, yeah. Anyway, all the bad stuff. Blame me. The team did amazingly. Um, I'm really proud of this project, even though we launched with a few buggy boys. But uh, yeah. Well, thank I, I you keep all talking. Very Do you want me to keep talking? <laughs> no, no. Well, I mean, it was helpful. It was helpful when I was. Uh, like, I'm trying to fit a boss fight in, just so I wasn't just constantly looking at um, no action the whole time, uh, or the stream wasn't. Yeah, and then fair. now I'm, and now I'm like, oh god, why did I do this? Because we're wrapping up. But yeah, thank you very much, everyone, for joining us today. I hope you've had a blast. I hope you're having a blast with the content out there too. Um, thank you to Shogun, Black Witch, and to Orion for joining us today. Uh, and Get out there if you haven't already tried. This is your time to PVM. You could look like a PVM god like me right now on my full Revo and uh, like ridiculously. Oh, 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 I got an effigy. I, I, I didn't see what the pub text was. For. I, I thought it was some, a great drop to finish. But um, but yeah, just I hope you're having a blast out there. If you haven't already tried PVM, if you've always been too afraid, there's been no better time. There's literally nothing to lose because of safe death. So uh, thank you very much for watching us. We won't have a stream tomorrow, but we will be back next week with a couple of streams, including a Lee's Q&A. So we hope to see you there. Until then, get out there, enjoy the fight uh, as you go take on the Archgaysaw, and we'll see you soon. Sarah. <laughs>